Now, I think we have the time, and I think I'd just like to put away what I've prepared and say a few words further extemporaneously on this occasion to this student body. First, I want to tell you that I love you. I love you kids. You, <coughs> wonderful young people of this church, I love you. I believe you're the best generation this church has ever had. No generation which has gone before measures up to the stature to which you measure up. You're better educated. I think you have greater faith. I think you have shown that faith and are showing that faith than any other previous generation. I'm so thankful for you. I thank you for your strength, for your willingness to do the right thing, for your desire to serve the Lord, for your capacity to help build the kingdom. For the fact that you get on your knees and say your prayers, as I know you do. For the fact that you pray to the Lord to help you, to guide you in the things you do, as I know you do. God bless you for what you are and who you are. Now, don't ever do a cheap or a tawdry or a mean or evil thing, my dear young friends. You don't have to engage in these things. The world is on a slippery slide. It's going downhill and it's going fast. And you are as a beacon on a hill of young people of rectitude and virtue and decency and goodness. Remain that way. Do not destroy your effectiveness. Do not become involved in any kind of behavior which would destroy you, injure you, hurt you, debilitate you in any way, whatever. You don't have to do those things. You can stand above them. You must stand above them. The world will look to you as the years pass. Of that I have no doubt whatever. For if it continues to go in the direction in which it is going, the disparity between the world and this church will grow and lengthen and we will become more and more of a peculiar people. When Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram started for Carthage to face what they knew would be an imminent martyrdom, Hiram read these words of comfort to the heart of his brother. Thou hast been faithful, wherefore thou shalt be made strong, even unto the sitting down in the place with which I have prepared in the mansions of my Father. A few short verses in the Book of Mormon. Later, when actually incarcerated in the jail, Joseph the prophet turned to the guards who held him captive and bore a powerful testimony of the divine authenticity of the Book of Mormon. Shortly thereafter, pistol and ball would take the lives of these two testators. In this their greatest and last hour of need, I ask you, would these men blaspheme before God by continuing to fix their lives, their honor, and their own search for eternal salvation on a book and by implication a church and a ministry they had fictitiously created out of whole cloth. 
Never mind that their wives are about to be widows and their children fatherless. Never mind that their little band of followers will yet be houseless, homeless, and friendless, and that their children will leave footprints of blood across frozen rivers and an untamed prairie floor. Never mind that legions will die and other legions live, declaring in the four quarters of this earth that they know the Book of Mormon and the church which it espouses it to be true. Disregard all of that and tell me whether in this hour of death these two men would enter the presence of their eternal judge quoting from and finding solace in a book which if not the very word of God would brand them as imposters and charlatans until the end of time they would not do that they were willing to die rather than deny the divine origin and the eternal truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. For 179 years this book has been examined and attacked, denied and deconstructed, and still it stands. Failed theories about its origins have been born, parroted, and died from Ethan Smith to Solomon Spalding to deranged paranoid to cunning genius. None of these frankly pathetic answers for this book has ever withstood examination because there is no other answer than the one Joseph gave as its young unlearned translator. I want it absolutely clear when I stand before the judgment bar of God that I declared to the world in the most straightforward language I could summon that the Book of Mormon is true that it came forth the way Joseph said it came forth and was given to bring happiness and hope to the faithful in the travail of the last days Wayfaring man of grief hath often crossed me off my way, who stood so humbly for relief that I could never answer nay. I had not power to ask his name where to he went or whence he came. Yet there was something in his eye that won my love. I knew not why. Now, be faithful, be true, go forward, be ambitious, don't short-circuit yourselves, don't stop now, keep going, keep going, educate your minds and your spirits, and never lose sight of the fact that you're a child of God with a divine destiny and capable of doing great and good and wonderful things. Don't sell yourselves short. 
Don't cheapen yourselves. You know who you are. You know that you are a child of God and that your Heavenly Father expects something great and noble and good of each of you. The Lord bless you, my dear young friends. As I look into your faces, I see the future. Keep the faith. You'll marry, you'll have children, you'll have grandchildren, you'll go out and do the work of this world. But maintain your integrity. Be honest. Be good. Be decent. Be prayerful. And the God of heaven will smile upon you and bless you and give happiness into your hearts and a sense of peace in your lives. Now, I wish for you nothing but the best. I are so choice and so wonderful and the future so great that you can't afford to betray yourselves in any way and to do anything less than that which each of you is capable of accomplishing. Shout with the armies of 